So I want to talk about Chloe and this Chris Brown song. Um, I have not seen the video. I had no interest in seeing the video or even listening to the song. The whole rollout leading up to this has been a complete disaster. Chris Brown has been in the news repeatedly um, for stupid stuff, like even him shouting out and saying, hey baby girl, to Rihanna while she performed for the Super Bowl. The conversation about him not letting um, black girls in the um, club or in the section. And then there was some black woman who said, oh, we never said that, da da da. We've, it's been known that Chris Brown don't like dark skinned girls. It's just been, it's been a thing. Like, you can't trace one dark skinned woman that Chris Brown has been in a relationship with or was rumored to be dating. Like the only thing that he's ever done close to it is done a song with no money. And even then she got chewed up for doing, um, for appearing in his video. It's just, okay. These things that be happening, like the reason why Chloe's fans did not, the real fans of Chloe did not want her working with Chris Brown because Chris Brown is a known abuser. He's a colorist. Um, and this fan base of Chloe's are very progressive like black folks, very progressive black women um, who love Chloe's music. They love Hallie, they love both of them. They've been supporting him for the longest. What this has done is alienated um, Chloe's audience. Like, it's just like, hey, the people who really rock for you, who really enjoy the music, who are gonna be the ones that's gonna be buying tickets and supporting you, now are like, hey, I don't know how I feel about you working with Chris Brown. And it's just, it's a disaster to see her full-fledged on. Like, I, I get that sometimes it turn into, oh my gosh, it's just so much drama. Y'all are hating, I get it. Especially as someone who puts out content and stuff, people engage it, they consume it, they talk about it, whatever. Sometimes it is hard for artists or whatever to like, not be able to tell the difference between like hate and valid criticism. It's very hard. A lot of folks can't do it. I have been trying to do it for years. I think I got it down to a little bit of a science and stuff. And I have people who surround me, who are surrounded by me, who would tell me, hey Justin, this right here ain't right. Like the, during the whole colorism conversation that happened in January, um, people started like digging up after the Tariq Ali situation, people started digging up old tweets and stuff. Someone like, typed in black or something that found the old tweet of me, you know, saying black me or something. And one of my friends, um, you know, hey, said like, girl, I know the fans are dragging you or uh, whatever, but like, hey, like, you know, what's this Miss Mama's? Like, what's this? And I, you know, I saw the tweet, I was like, I don't remember necessarily what I said or whatever, what there was in, in relation to, but I did talk about it in a video explaining how colorism works and all that other stuff and how anti-blackness and massage noir shows up. Um, and that's just what it is. Like, and I, I feel like no one is in Chloe's space that understands why the fans are not here for her working with Chris Brown. And it's not hate. It's just like, hey, I have a very specific politic. I do not believe in supporting abusers. I just don't. And I do not want to be giving them a listen or anything. I'm just not going to be doing that. And that's hard for people to understand. Like, that's hard for folks to be like, what do you mean? He, you know, blah, 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 what's going on? It's just music, but it's not. They just don't want to, and they don't have to. They don't have to support. So, and I feel like a lot of those folks who felt like this are Chloe fans. Like the folks who really support and ride hard for Chloe, where a lot of them just saying, hey, I can't support this. Like I'm not going to be standing to the point that I am like throwing my own morals and my beliefs away just because I'm just not gonna do that. And they were very, you know, vocal about it on social media. Uh, you know, and I know Chloe deals with a lot of criticism, a lot of hate, unfortunately. I, I think she's very talented. Um, I think she is a very sweet girl. Uh, I think she, you know, is room for growth and stuff, and I've been seeing that. And I'm, I'm honestly interested in seeing what her project does and stuff, just to support her. Uh, but I don't know if I can support, like, I can't support this. Like, I just can't support this. And by this happening, like, I've been said, I said in my previous video, I said the fans are not going to be, Chris Brown's fans 
are not going to be coming over to support Chloe like that. It's just not. Now, somebody put up a chart and said Chris Brown has had plenty of hits over the last whatever. He's responsible for a lot of hits. And that may be. Chris Brown has a very specific fan base. Folks who listen to his music and whatever. Um, but this fan base is not really interested in like coming over to the Chloe Hive other than to listen to this song. But a lot of them are not going to stick around. They're not. Like, it'll give a little play. See, things have changed. Things have changed a lot um, in the music industry. Like, how things used to work don't work like that. Yes, Chris Brown coming over to an uh, artist that's trying to grow can give them a little bit of visibility. Maybe if it worked probably 10, 20 years ago or whatever. But it doesn't always work. It's not always guaranteed, but it does give them some visibility and some eyes and stuff. But what's happening now is Chris Brown's image is so damaged, even though he's still doing well. The fans of Chloe, like I said, are progressive and just like, no, I'm not going to be out here supporting the user or not alienated. And these Chris Brown fans are not interested in Chloe's music. They're just not. They're just not interested in her like that. They're just not. And we saw that while, you know, the song debuted, what, 110 on the Bubbling Under? Uh, I think it debuted 110. And some people are saying this is not bad. This is not terrible. It still has like time to get on radio play. I don't see it. I don't see it. And it's a lot of push behind. It's like a lot of push. And it's just not happening. It's just not happening. Um, and I just don't think this was a good idea. But they've already signed a contract and already did the stuff and da da da. And she just has to, like this is un like this is unfortunate that um, you know that black women, black female artists have to experience stuff like this. Like they have to, you know, work with these folks and they end up being harmed in, in the long run. Like they end up dealing with all the backlash and all the other stuff. And then Chris Brown, absolutely nothing. Like he's still doing pretty good. He's still throwing women's phones and stuff out in the crowd and all the other stuff. Like he's still, like it's still, like y'all can't tell me that Chris Brown has changed. He's still doing the same stuff. Literally was, you know, dancing on this woman, took her phone and threw it out in the crowd. Like, even if she was on her phone, not paying him any attention or anything, like, that's not his worst thing to throw her phone. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, um, you know, Chris Brown, this ended up hurting Chloe the more than it helped her. Um, but we already knew that. We already knew that. So, um, I unfortunately think that Chloe is okay with Chris Brown doing that, um, which is questionable too. It's just like, girl, we expect a little bit more from you. We expect a little bit more from you. Um, and celebrities are not our friends. Like, we don't know what these folks think. We, we don't know. Hopefully Chloe is able to bounce back off of this, but I do think this is kind of rocky for like for getting ready for her album release and all the other stuff. Like. Hopefully she will. I, I, I'm hoping, but I'm just like, girl, like this, mm, girl. But Chris Brown is just like continuously being talked about, continuously being talked about in a bad way, leading up to the single and the single being out. It's just not doing any good at all. Um, like it's just not. Ludo, since we talk about the baby sisters, um, the Little Mermaid trailer saw it. Uh, Girl, I just don't know. Um, <laughs> I did like the little part where she, mm -hmm. I love that part when she was talking to like the fish and, mm -hmm. and then she smiled, I thought it was really cute. Um, I love the Barbie doll that's made, the Little Mermaid Barbie doll. I am terrified of this movie at this point. I just don't know how this is gonna work. Like, and how I look at it is like this, okay. The lot of action that happened with the Lion King worked a little bit because we had animals on animals, like animals on animals. So if the animal is like barely opening its mouth and that's how they communicate and that's how they're talking and stuff, like, you know, that's how they communicate. But when you see a human being, how I see it is a human being open their mouth, like talking, 
we're used to seeing cartoons where the animals talk back like this. So how is it going to look where a crab that looks like a crab um, or a fish that looks like a real, real fish, not cartoonish, starts speaking? It's going to look awkward as hell. Like, it's going to look awkward. Um, and I'm just, I don't know. I don't know, child. That's going to be interesting to see um, how that's going to go. Child, I don't know, but I'm, I'm terrified. I am going to go see it to see and tell y'all how I feel about it and stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, also, let me talk about my girl Ari Lennox. So I went to Ari Lennox concert. Girl, Ari Lennox put on a show. I'm so glad I bought them tickets. I, I enjoyed Ari Lennox's performance. Like, blown away. Like, blown away. Like, the look, the vocals, the execution. Oh my God. First of all, homegirl who came out and opened for Ari. Let's talk about her, because I had to... Her name is uh, Jalen Josie. She performed the song, Good Soup. Dude, homegirl was up there singing. I like the singer. Homegirl was up there. Oh, it was giving. Oh, Jalen Josie, girl, you ate it up. Scum that I am, yum, I her, her, she chewed it up. I was just like, oh, girl, like, it was good. But... She did amazing. Our Lennox did amazing. Those tickets was worth every penny. I honestly want to go see her again somewhere else. So if Our Lennox ever comes back, I've been listening to Our Lennox ever since. Like I, I was listening to her every once in a while, but it's like, okay, girl, like let me listen to um, you know, her music. I'm in the show. It's just giving like, all right, you make really good music. You're a very talented black woman. I love her down the house and on boots. And the folks were living for her. The girls was living for her. At the concert, um, I was just, I was just having a moment. I was just loving it so much. So shout out! I was also excited and thankful to, for the couple of fans who recognized me and walked up to me and thanked me for my content and all the other stuff. It was really sweet. Folks walking by, it's like, oh my gosh, can you read, Justin? All that. I love when y'all do that to me. Y'all be making me feel so good, y'all. Oh, y'all just do something for my spirit. I love y'all so much. You see me in public, speak to me, girl. It is. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um. But that's our latest concert. Really enjoyed that. Let's move on to talk about some other stuff. This is kind of some old tea. Joe Button trying to shave Michael B. Jordan and saying that Michael B. Jordan is corny and stuff. And like how he was treating this like black woman. Um, you know, apparently he was like, well, not apparently, but Michael B. Jordan was on the red carpet. And um, this black woman who um, went to school with him. Uh, she apparently used to call him corny and Michael B. Jordan uh, was being interviewed by her on the red carpet. And he was like, I remember you, da 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 And uh, he was like, yeah, you know, like the corny dude, da 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 And, girl, there's so many layers to this, but that's what I'm speaking about. Um, let this stuff go. Like, let, like, Michael B. Jordan, if you were, if you were taking a picture, like, uh, of yourself to school, like, uh, um, what is that? I don't know what that's called. Like, a, uh, like a photo shoot picture of yourself or whatever, uh, to school. Like, girl, that really is corny. And it's okay. Um, I was bullied in high school, middle school, elementary school for being queer. Like, I don't hold no resentment toward these folks. I had to let that go. Like, you know, everybody who, who did me wrong, like, how I see it is, yes, I was bullied in high school, but the people who are, you know, doing less or not doing as well financially or whatever, them doing me wrong is not the reason why they're living in poverty. It's just not the reason why. Like, poverty can happen to anybody. Um, and we have this, like, this thought process that only people who do good excel, and it's just not real. There are a lot of people who do a lot of harm who do excel. It's just like, it's just, it, I just don't like that, that um, ideology that, oh, well, you know, you do folks wrong, they'll be like, there's folks who were bullying folks in high school and elementary school who are now successful at doing stuff and bullying other people in different type of ways. Like, it's just, it is what it is. And, and I just feel like folks need to let, let that go. A lot of people projecting on Michael B. Jordan and be like, yeah, yeah, like, 
That's what happens when folks like it. A lot of people I see who ain't doing well, it's like, girl, y'all are 30 plus years old. Let that shit, go see a therapist. Like, go see a therapist, get some counseling, let that shit go. Like, oh my gosh. Um, and Michael B. Jordan probably, he is corny. He just named Drake as one of the best rappers on the face of the planet. He is corny as hell. And he's not really that good of an actor. Um, I feel like he's decent. But, like, Michael B. Jordan, looking the way he looks, has helped him a lot. I don't think he's, a, like, a, he doesn't blow me away with his acting skills. It's not been many, like, things, scenes, the stuff I've seen that he's just really delivered. Uh, but, you know, folks, I don't, I don't know. But uh, that person who was, like, you know, calling him corny, she is also corny. She was um, doing a lot with Kalani, doing uh, Kalani's interviewing and, you know, was misgendering. Kalani and stuff. It was just a mess. But yeah, girl, it's just a that's the whole thing. But um Michael B. Jordan um in the Creed movie came out this past weekend. I don't I'm just not a boxing person. I don't think I'm gonna see it. Y'all seen it too much y'all thought about it. I ain't just interested in it. But back on Joe Button calling uh, him, you know, lame and all the other stuff and disrespecting black women, girl, you are the last person. You are the last person. That need to be talking about this. Girl, do we need to bring up your pay? Do I need to bring up the receipts, baby girl? Because I got the receipts. Like, come on now, Joe Budden. Like, you can't be serious, so star. You can't be all that, all that reckless singing. <laughs> I love me some got to be real. But yes, Joe Budden is the last person who needs to be talking about um, how black man treats other black women. He, he himself has been very disrespectful and abusive to other black women in the past. Like, go find you some business about yourself. Um, speaking of, let's, speaking of got to be real, I want to talk about this whole Shaka Khan situation. Shaka Khan was doing a podcast, and she was talking about the top, like, singers and stuff, like the article about the top singers and stuff. And baby, Shaka Khan was going in. Like, Shaka Khan was out here like, Girl, the school of he the Helen Keller's kids. Girl, Shaka Khan was being so shady, but she was being honest. Like she, she like I listened to them clips. I was like, oh, Shaka Khan has me bawling tears, like laughing. <laughs> like, it was Shaka Khan was being so shady, and you know she was talking about the list. She's like, how hey, the hell is she up a baby? She can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, people started to get upset about it and press and start bringing up the Shaka Khan and her um, struggle with addiction and stuff. It just wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all. It's like Shaka Khan is literally doing the stuff that everybody else be doing. I don't like. I don't think it was anything wrong with Shaka Khan getting up there saying. I don't, I don't think it was that bad. Like I, I just thought it was funny. Like let her have her moment talk her stuff or whatever like Shaka Khan is a legend like Shaka Khan is a legend she can get up there and, and say that stuff like oh man has lived her life uh, and <laughs> but that's what she was saying about Mary J. Black <laughs> oh my god <laughs> cause you uh, I, I'm just gonna be quiet on that I'm gonna pass the peach I'm gonna pass the peach but uh, that it was hilarious. Shaka Khan had me crying. Like, she was just going the F in. Um, I was going to talk about Angela Yee um, in the Breakfast Club situation, but I feel like I want to talk about that in a standalone video. I might do that um, Thursday um, because now there's been a whole conversation about, um, you know, like, Angela Yee being the only black woman, the only woman uh, working on the set of... Um, the Breakfast Club and how she was treated. I feel like it's a lot of stuff in that. And she talked about it with Tamara Hall. I'm going to talk about that later in the video because I want to do a standalone video about that. But they do have Portia, my girl. I love Portia Down. Like I told y'all in my part one of my video, I love Portia Down. But Portia response to Tamara Hall and stuff is just like, it is not giving. And I love me some Portia. But um, Tamara Hall grilling her and asking her about Simon and what they was doing and all the other stuff. I, that wasn't like her being rude or ugly. That was her being a journalist. Like that's what happens when you are a journalist and you getting down to what folks want to know because that has been a big conversation. Yes, Portia was on there trying to push her book and trying to sell her book and make, you know, folks interested about her book, but 
People wanted to know about this relationship with Simon and what they were doing and when is the wedding. And Tamara Hall was doing a really good job of getting to the tea. And she was holding Portia like feet to the fire. And Portia didn't have enough media training to be able to deflect. And she went on there with a bunch of drama. First of all, if Portia wasn't ready to talk about that, she should never took her ass on that damn show. If Portia did not want to talk about that, she should never went up. Like, she should have looked and seen who Tamara Hall was. But that was not Tamara Hall being messy or anything. Like, Tamara Hall was in there getting to the tea. She was getting to the tea and she was interviewing you, which is supposed to happen. She wasn't giving fluff. She was like, if you want fluff, you can go somewhere else. But she was really asking the questions that people want to know. But, you know, that is what it is. But thank you all so much for watching my video today. Thank you for watching another King of Reads video. Let me know what y'all thought about my commentary on the subjects today. Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.